where we came from perhaps you know what's our dna ancestry and you can see where i'm going with this now that you know there's all these um companies that have been out for a while that have um you know promoted um you know you find out what your ancestry is you might find out some obscure percentage of dna from way back when maybe your part neanderthal whatever um, <laughs> um it has been something that's been part of the um uh, the culture i guess for a while you know like you can do one of these dna tests sounds innocuous and fun and and whatever of course um do you want to call it like anything in tech these days because it's kind of a not not tech per se but that kind of startup mentality of where um you know one of the most um biggest ones of uh, biggest one of these companies 23 and me's in a bit of trouble at the moment um and it kind of um maybe you could see it coming maybe potentially is a um worst case scenario but you know now that uh, the company is facing bankruptcy and there's a potential for all the genetic data that they've um uh accumulated over the years doing all this dna testing etc for customers could potentially be bought up by some random third party and then all of a sudden your dna is in the hands of someone else that um you have got no idea what they're going to do do with which you know <laughs> to be cynical they're going to sell you more advertising maybe um, <laughs> oh, that, that's the way it seems to be going <laughs> but um but I mean, obviously, your brain can go straight to a lot of uh, nefarious kind of uh, things too, you know, like insurance companies blocking uh, healthcare access or, well, you know, paying for healthcare access or whatever. Take your pick. That's probably the obvious one. But I don't know, like, um, I never really, uh, I don't know, I think we've ever even talked about this sort of stuff before, but I, I was never really into it anyway. I kind of like the idea of, you know, trying to f figure out, like, <laughs> what you're made of, basically. Um, but... Um, essentially the only options were through these private companies and if it's a private company something like this can happen oh 100 percent. and I, I just want to wind back a bit on this because the article you sent through was really interesting and actually referenced you know how the mood was very different in 2016 to how it is today and i think that's that's actually the real narrative here the dangers are really clear. I mean, there's no, there's no more IP for a person, any human or, or in fact, any living individual than their DNA. And, you know, to put that out there is one thing, but to sign it over to someone else, I mean, really, uh, even if, if you think the worst thing that can happen for you is advertising, but I guess... They'll start selling you a whole lot of pharmaceuticals for conditions that you're likely to develop in the next 10 years. So, but, uh, you, you know, to, to think that, that that's what's happened here, but initially no one was that concerned. You know, there was that euphoria, this technology is finally here. You can find out about who you are, where you come from perhaps even a little bit about uh, health conditions that you might want to consider or work hard to avoid. And it sounded so good. It was cheap for the first time and it was something we could all do. It was it almost seemed like a democratization until, of course, you sign those terms and conditions, which you don't really think about too much. And they're probably no different to signing on for Apple or Google. <laughs> and the next thing you know, you don't know where your DNA or your data, your personal IP has gone. And it's gone and it's being monetized. Personally, I think if somebody actually challenged this in court, even though it's a data sharing agreement and you've signed off on it, I think the reality is, is that there is a human rights case that you're DNA cannot be profited from without you receiving a share of that profit. I think that's what's remarkable about this case is that that extra step, I think, uh, if you compare it to anything else where you're you know your data's been collected or something um i mean obviously there's um the privacy angle with um what data's been collected as well but like i'm sure like um social media companies for instance can argue well you signed that over so but this is a little bit different because um I mean, you're talking about the fundamental building blocks of what makes you you in this well, case. <laughs> well, that's right. And I'd be interested in actually reading these terms and conditions and seeing if moral rights are in there because they may or may not be. And as you'd appreciate around IP, creativity and that, 
you have a moral right over any uh, IP that you create or have ownership of. And if they haven't been signed off, that potentially would be something that you could use to prevent them selling on to third party or, or taking advantage from having your data. But it is, it's uh, collectively scary. It's a great little blog, that one too, that you attached. I, I like, you know, even the fact that it points up that uh, there's a chance you're shopping in distant relatives to the cops and whatever else. And of course, we'd like to think that perpetrators of crimes are taken off the streets and, and dealt with appropriately. But, uh, you know, I think also it e equally allows for probably negative consequences as much as there might be positive. Well, that's and, a, and, that's and no a, one gets a say in it. And that's the sad thing about um, a lot of things in the 21st century, really, when these new types of services are um, brought out and uh, etc. is that for every good thing you can think of that it or positive that it brings, you just have to factor in that there's going to be a certain amount of negative consequences based on some nefarious behavior that someone out there is absolutely going to exploit. Well, yeah, I, I tend to agree. And, and look, let's face it, there's so much of our personal data out there now. We might as well all take nude photos of ourselves and post them and our social security numbers and any, anything else people might want. <laughs> might as well just post it all online now and save everyone the trouble. And then it, and then it makes the, the playing field equal. I think, I think when you, you've got to go to the other extreme now. So when one or two entities have control of your personal data, that's a problem for you. I think if everyone has the personal data out there, then maybe that's a problem for those companies. <laughs> just, just we'll try and reverse it. 